and I won't repeat what I said yesterday, but I guess I'll paraphrase it in saying that I understand the ethics of the President of the United States. I understand that we need to have respect for it. But I only give that respect when I see a president willfully guarding the Constitution of the United States of America. When I see a president standing up on more than one occasion and not defending the Constitution which he swore to uphold, this president or any president, I think that the ethics of what the honor of being the president has almost been thrown out the window when that happens. I said almost, right? Well, I don't think you should try to run up on stage, you know, and grab the microphone. Probably a bad idea with the Secret Service. But the fact of the matter is, folks, you have to earn respect. Yeah, see, the seat of the President of the United States is something that obviously should automatically have respect. But when you have presidents, you know, I mean, how many times have you heard, I did not have sexual relations with that woman, he's looking at the camera, lying, bold face lying. They disrespect the seat of the President of the United States of America by having sex in the Oval Office. That's just one example. Current example is by doing things that are obviously in our face against the powers that the president has. An overreach. Our founding fathers warned us of tyranny. Our founding fathers warned us to the point that we have a second amendment, that we have the right to have militias. Why did they do that? They did that, ladies and gentlemen. Because they knew someday, when you talk about freedom, and you talk about America, and you talk about having a pretty open society, you talk about a Christian nation, and a Christian nation, listen, turn the other cheek, right? When we say those things, all those things, you, 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 you take them, and you add them up. And what do you have? You have a society that's normally very relaxed. When I say relaxed, I don't mean you don't see bad things happening. But Christians are taught to turn the other cheek, give people the benefit of the doubt, forgive them, all that stuff, right? Allow them to repent, whatever. And unfortunately, the people who are not good people or the people who are against this country, they use that against us. And there's been a big deal going on, and I even got pushed back on a little bit. I listen, I had a lot of people that said, yeah, man, I agree with it completely what you said, Craig. But I had some people say, you know what, Craig, you're a little hard. You know, you, there's a respect to the, to the seat of the presidency. I agree. But it's up to the person who's the president to keep that respect. It's up to that person to use the dignity of that seat, okay, as a leader of the free world. When they, when they put their hand on the Bible, first of all, do they believe it? First of all, we have to ask ourselves this question. Do people actually believe what they're saying when they put their hand on the Bible and they raise their hand and they say they swear to God to hold up what the Constitution says in this country? Because if they don't, it doesn't matter. I could, that'd be like me putting my left hand on the Betty Crocker cookbook. And go, yeah, I swear to God to uphold all the rules and all the regulations and all everything that's in every recipe in the Betty Crocker cookbook. Well, if I, what's Betty Crocker going to do if I don't? See, the fear is that God will do something to you. The fear is that you put your hand in the Bible and Christians believe that if you lie under oath, that's like a bad thing. And that gets held against you to the point that one day you have to answer for that. But unfortunately, there is a growing number of people in this country who do not believe in that code and ethics. They don't believe in in, in what it is to be a Christian nation. They don't believe in what the Bible is. Even when they say they believe in the Bible, they're throwing out blasphemy blasphemy and, and, and being very hateful. You know, Reverend Wright. 
in the name of God. So I'm saying all this. I'm going to play in a moment the video, excuse me, the uh, audio of what I'm talking about from yesterday. And I know you've heard about it. Sean Hannity had the guy on who actually did the, I don't call it heckling. It wasn't heckling. He asked a question at the wrong time. And do I believe he's double, you know, he's covering his steps? Yes, I watched it. He's covering his steps. He's saying, you know, I, I was trying to guess when the president was done speaking. I, I mean, well, don't do that. Just say, listen, I'm, I mean, I'm fed up because the president doesn't take questions. I said he acts like a king. I said on the air yesterday that, that it's like a peasant. He treats the people like they're peasants. He treats the Constitution like it's not even there. See, I don't want a president that constantly makes me have to go to the Supreme Court to figure out if what they did was right. I don't want to have to get to the point that numbers in multiple states by the dozens push against what the president's doing because it's being found in their mind by all the different attorney generals. Greg Abbott was on, uh, on Greta. Isn't that interesting that this show has the same powerful people on it that Fox News has? Isn't it interesting that people like Greg Abbott and Alberto Gonzalez was on? He's been on the Craig Bouchon show. And I work very hard to do that because you need to know right here in the state of Texas, right here are the most powerful capital in the United States, what's going on. So this show is equal to the, heck, I can spend more time with them. I just had Ted Cruz on. He was on Sean Hannity. He was on uh, Laura Ingram. He's been on, uh, I could go on, Greta Van Susteren, maybe eight minutes. He was on for twice that long on this show. That's powerful. But yeah, sometimes I push back. Sometimes I push back at these people when I see things that are obvious in our face. Like overstepping the bounds of the presidency. But just to refresh your memory, and I want you to pay attention, not to just what the president said. Please understand how this uh, this video and audio has been edited that you don't even see it on MSNBC, CNN, C- CBS, ABC. You don't see it on any of it. Even Fox News doesn't even play the end of this. And we're going to play the end of it on Craig Bouchon's show because it's very important. So you can't hear the question that he asks, inappropriate or not in his timing, and that was never answered. But let's play the entire clip just like we did yesterday. Casey, please play it. It is, the, it is the right thing to do. Excuse me, sir. I, I, it's not time for questions, sir. I, I, not while I'm speaking. Precisely because this is temporary, Congress needs to act. There's still spells, innocent young kids. And the answer to your question, sir, and the next time I prefer you let me finish my statements before you ask that question, is this is the right thing to do for the American people. Babe Bika, I, I, didn't, I didn't ask for an argument. I'm answering your question. It is the right thing to do for now, the American people. Now, pause it right there. Here's why. Now, so far, you don't have no idea. That's where they cut it off. That's where every single news agency cuts it off. So you're going, yeah, that guy, what a jerk he is, you know. Uh, and the president, he must have answered his question because he said, because it's the right thing to do. The right thing to do. Well, what's the right thing to do? Obviously, I don't think it's the right thing to do to let 800,000 plus people in here that, that it's a temporary deal. It's not a temporary deal. It's not temporary, folks. It's a systematic way for the Democrats to get people to vote for them. It's a systematic way. You know, listen, when people are down and out and people are desperate, they're going to do whatever they need to do to stay in the game. And you're going to have a substantial amount of those people eventually, I believe, one day uh, be able to vote. Because that's the direction it's going. That's the direction it's going, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't think so, my God. But you don't know what he was asking. And at the end, right here, right now, you will. Go ahead, Casey. These young people are going to make extraordinary contributions and are already making contributions to our society. All right? Thank you very much, everybody. specifically ruled this out, sir, last year. What about American workers who are unemployed while you import foreigners? Yeah, what about that? What about American workers that are unemployed while you import foreigners? 
when you allow 800,000 people to soak up jobs because they're nice. Because they're nice people. Listen, if I was if I was Mexican from Mexico, I'd be like, yeah, rock on. <laughs> That's awesome. And, and my heart goes out to them. I, I get, man, living in Mexico must suck really bad. If you're running over here uh, and, and trying to stay and having anchor babies and doing all this stuff, I think it's the 14th Amendment we have to look at now. The 10th Amendment, forget that. Sovereignty <laughs> or, each, or the state having its individual rights within the union. <laughs> yeah, sovereignty, yeah. I've been quoted to say that this presidency, this president's one of his goals, and it's not just him. He didn't get there on accident. You don't go from never having a job, going to Harvard, never having a regular job, going into government, and then going from being a governor, excuse me, from being in the government and being getting up to a freshman senator, and then you're the president of the United States of America. It doesn't happen. It does not happen. It only happens when there's a machine. It only happens when there's a system in place. It only happens, folks, when there's something going on. When there's something going on below the current, below the feet that we stand on, that underbelly of something that we just don't, we can't get our finger on that pulse. How does this happen? They take advantage of us being disengaged. And the one thing we have to understand is at the end of that video or that audio, what is said? 